So hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to have you here today. Uh, what we're gonna work on today is sending Expo push notifications from a backend server. In order to get the most out of this tutorial, you're gonna wanna do the part that comes just before it, which is actually setting up Expo push notifications in your mobile app so that they can accept uh, notifications from the server, obviously. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. Something pretty cool to keep in mind about this tutorial is that if you're following my IoT series, this is actually the last video. Again, you can do this video without um, having to do all the different IoT stuff, but it is the completion of it um, if you are following along, and I think that's pretty cool. So a couple topics I left out of this video and left them out on purpose because it would make it way too long are authentication and security. Those are kind of topics that are complex in and of themselves. So um, for things like handling the Expo push token in this tutorial, it could probably be done better, but I recommend looking into basically like security and authentication and how to build that into your server um, before necessarily deploying something like this to production. The primary audience of this tutorial is mainly meant for people doing like at home DIY type projects, but definitely this work can be extended just a little further uh, if you wanna bring things um, into production and into a larger audience. All right, so um, let's get into the coding. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is have our setup. And to set things up, actually, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to this base project for Express. And I recommend you clone it from there so that you can uh, follow along. Okay, so once you have your Express project, we're gonna to wanna to install some dependencies. So we're gonna to wanna to install Expo Server SDK, Cron, and Firebase. Okay, so once that's done, you're gonna to wanna to go into the Firebase project you created in the last part of the tutorial and create a web app. Um, just give it a name, whatever you want. I'll call it my garden server. And the next part you can just kind of next through. We're going to grab these credentials in a minute. Uh, I'm going to refresh the page really quick so I can see the app. And when I go in there, I can copy and paste the credentials from there that I'm going to be using uh, in my app. And by the way, uh, you're going to want to initialize your real-time database if you haven't already. Uh, you're going to want to use that database for all the different data that we're going to be storing in this tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is going to create the Firebase service. And what we're going to do here is we're going to initialize our app. And we're also going to grab some basic Firebase primitives that we can use in order to fetch data from it. After that, uh, we'll have the Firebase config all set up nicely and we will initialize our Firebase app. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is actually grab a database reference and the database so that we can do the various operations as we go through into the methods. Uh, the first is gonna be save token and we're gonna use this to save the Expo push token into Firebase. Like I said, you probably wanna encrypt this if you are doing this in a real production uh, situation, but this is for DIY, so we're not gonna worry about security here. Um, I'm assuming you're just using it in your home. So uh, we're gonna have our user tokens part of the um, database and we're gonna use the user ID to store their tokens there. And at the reference, we are going to uh, basically just set the value and I made a bunch of typos and user tokens. So let me go fix those in a second. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna add the payload in. And there's my typos. Okay, so after that, we're gonna delete all the boilerplate that I had in there, and we're gonna start setting up Express. Uh, we're also gonna import body parser because it's not built into Express and you have to use it to parse JSON and uh, query parameters and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna use 8000 as our port and I'm gonna set the address as private because um, you don't need to know my personal <laughs> URL that I'm using, you can use your own. And then I'm gonna set up my JSON parser and HTTP parser. So immediately I'm gonna create an endpoint called register push token, and we're gonna use that to save the push token to Firebase. So the user ID is gonna come from the request body and the token is also going to come from there. At this point, I'm going to save it to the Firebase service, just like that, and I have to import it. And 
and then I'm going to respond with a 200. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have our listener on the server, uh, pretty basic, right? Uh, again, I import the address from the personal one that I'm using, and then I'm just going to console log that uh, the server's running. Okay, so now I'm going to run the app really quickly, um, like the mobile app, and the mobile app's going to give me an expo push token. And basically I'm going to test using Postman that uh, this endpoint works and that I'm able to save the token. So I'm going to bring up Postman and I'm going to paste in my token and I'm going to hit send and the server is not activated. So let me run the server. Okay, so now it should work now that we're running. Okay, good. So we got success. So then if we check Firebase, our token is now stored uh, in the database as we just, as we want. Okay, so next up, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get the token from Firebase. Uh, we're gonna do this so that we can sort of dynamically um, send the push notifications. So at the user token, well, sorry, with the database ref at the user token for user ID, we're gonna grab that um, expo push token. Okay, so now we're gonna create an endpoint. I'm gonna call this samples, but really um, for now, it's just gonna send a push notification. This is for the people that are just here for to see how to send an expo push notification. This is how you just send the notification. Um, after this part, I'm gonna focus more on um, like the IoT stuff, but this is how you send it. Okay, so uh, we need to create an expo object. And in here, we say we're gonna send a push notification async. Inside there, we can create an object, which is the contents of the push notification. So it's to our token, we can give it a title. And finally, we can give it a message. Uh, in this case, we're gonna say water your plants. Sorry, body, not message. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a response here. And then on a physical device, I'm going to send the push notification. And as you can see, it comes in there. Perfect. Okay, so now for some more IoT stuff, let's actually save a sample to Firebase. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take in a moisture level and a user ID and add to the database reference to the um, user's data. We're going to use date.now as the key so that Firebase real-time database will sort it. and at that reference, we're gonna put in the actual moisture level. Next, I'm gonna get the samples so that they can be sent to the mobile app. And we can do that through a Firebase get. And we'll just get all the different values uh, for now. Obviously for scalability, you'd probably only wanna get a few, but uh, this is DIY. So for now, we're just gonna grab everything. And I'm gonna type it as a moisture array or an array of moisture objects. And I'm gonna put the, just the moisture in the array, nothing else. And for the sake of convenience, I'm gonna do the current moisture level, which is the most recent one, and add that to the first part of the object, just to make it easier to fetch on the front end. Okay, so I'm gonna delete all that code to send a push notification and move that to a cron job a little later on. Uh, what I'm gonna do for now is I'm actually gonna save the moisture level. And we're gonna use the user ID for that, which we're gonna get from the web request. And then finally, I'm gonna use the Firebase service to save our sample for that user ID and send back a 200. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a um, path to be able to get this information back, like I showed you from the get. And we're gonna use the user ID and the Firebase service in order to fetch that information and send it back in a response.
And let's see if this worked. So in Postman, I'm going to send a sample off. Uh, I kind of want to try to drag it so you can see it. And there you go. Pretty cool. It's all saved, which is nice. I'm going to load it up with a few different values just so that um, we have something to see in the mobile app. Next, let's check out the get request. So let's do it on the analytics endpoint for the user ID of 0001, which is what we defaulted to in the mobile app. And you can see the response comes in, which is pretty cool. So let's check out how this looks in the mobile app. And boom, all of our data comes in and we can create our graph really nice. So now let's send the push notifications whenever the samples hit a certain value. So we're going to check every 60 seconds, we're going to run this function to see if the moisture level is too low. And if it's too low, we're going to send it off. So I'm going to hard code the user ID because there's only one user of this application right now. And I'm going to use that token and I'm going to grab the samples for that user. And if the most recent sample is um, greater than 570, which means it's really dry, I'm going to send a push notification telling the user to water their plant. All right, so I'm going to run this and I'm going to speed it up a bit so you don't have to wait the full 60 seconds. And as you can see, the push notification comes in. If we tap on it, it opens the app and loads all of our data. Pretty cool. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and happy hacking.